Hey everyone, thank you for hopping on tonight's team call. Tonight is Tuesday. The, I, I always mess this up. I Forgive me. This is what happens when you're a full-time stay-at-home coach. You never know what day it is because every day is your weekend, right? So today's Tuesday. So happy Tuesday. I know it's Tuesday because that's when we do our team calls. Um, tonight we have a very special guest speaker that I've been personally working with one-on-one -on -one for uh, over a month and a half now, I believe. Yeah. Um, but... Um, I want to thank you guys for all taking the time out of your days, first of all, and your evenings with family. And I know a lot of you guys are East Coasters as well as Nick. So it's um, bedtime, if you will, um, for you guys. So thank you for taking time out of your night um, to hop on. And you, you are showing up for you. So always remember that you're not showing up for me. You're not showing up for Nick. You're showing up for you, your family, and your future. So thank you guys all for hopping on. So now let me introduce you to Coach Nick. He's been an entrepreneur for over a decade. Shut um, as a oh, actually, I'm gonna mute everyone before I oops. <laughs> oops. There's a button here. <laughs> okay. Sorry guys. Okay. And Nick, I'm gonna unmute you. Where'd you go? There you go. Okay. So let me let me start this over. Okay. Nick has been an entrepreneur for over a decade as an author, trainer, founder, and president of the Freedompreneurs Club. Nick has helped thousands of small business owners become freedompreneurs. Nick's personality gives him a unique ability to motivate, inspire, and help implement successful strategies that generate leads, convert more clients, and increase profits while main maintaining the integrity of his spiritual life. Nick has been mentored and worked with some of the top coaches in the world and brings practical ideas and systems to any business he is involved with. His coaching groups are high energy, high impact, and takes a holistic view to coaching. As a certified life coach, Nick fuses personal and spiritual development, business development, and accountability into every aspect of his business, which allows for higher impact and higher income. Now, I, before I hand it over to Nick, I want to tell you guys how I actually met Nick. So it's kind of funny. So I, um, I listen, one of my favorite podcasts is um, My Seven Chakras, and one day I was listening to it, and I think I even told Nick this, but usually I like just bypass the guy speakers because the women ones are usually the ones that are more entertaining, and their energy just like pulls me the second I start listening to them, and usually the guys are very monotoned or like, I don't know, I'm just not vibing with them, um, and so one day I popped on the podcast and here's this guy, Nick, and he was like all exciting. And like, I just was pulled in immediately. And I was like, okay, I got, I got to reach out to this guy some way, shape or form. And thankfully at the end of it, um, they said how to get a hold of him. So I was like, dude, I'm, I'm going to message him. And so <laughs> I, I messaged Nick on Facebook and we actually got a, on a one-on-one -on -one consultation. And um, that day he's like, so do you, do you want to, what do you want to do out of this? And I was like, well, I want you for my team. And like I was just drawn to his energy right away and um, everything that we were talking about. So he's like, when do you want to sign up? I'm like, right now, Let, let's, <laughs> let's do this. So I was super excited. And every time I talk to him, like Ashley knows Ashley's my success partner. Every time I get off the phone with him, I like go straight to Ashley and I'm like, Oh my God, this is what we're doing. Oh my God. Like I get goosebumps and it's crazy. But um, so I'm super excited and honored that Nick is hanging out with us tonight. You guys um, I, uh, love you all to death. So I, you, you all know that everything I learn or everything that I take away from anything, I give right back to you guys. And so here is hands on one-on-one, -on -one, well, one on what, 17 or whatever we are here. <laughs> um, but let me hand it over to Nick and just to let you guys know, you guys could post questions in the chat box. Um, and if we have time at the end, we'll be answered, but, um, yeah, so take her away. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was an amazing introduction. And not just the part that I wrote, but the part that you said too was amazing. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you've, you've stroked my ego a lot and I totally appreciate it, but I have to give it back to you because, um, what I really heard in that story from my perspective was someone who was like, wow, I got to meet this person. You reached out, you took action, and then right away you were like, yes. And that's the real true sign of a leader. And uh, I was really excited to work with you right away because I knew just by your attitude and your energy, I was like, wow, you are going to help a lot of people. And that's what I'm about. And so I'm totally down with that, and I totally appreciate it. So thank you so much. Yay. 
<laughs> All right, cool. Welcome, uh, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity to, to speak with you. Um, I really want to get into it. Um, you know, uh, Vicky did a great job of introducing me. So I just really want to get into the information because we do have a limited time here today. And I want to make sure that you get a lot of value today. Now, I want to ask that for this particular session, that if you plan on taking notes or anything like that, don't. And this may be like, oh, well, that's kind of weird, right? Like, why would somebody ask you, especially me, a trainer, to ask you not to take notes? And here's the deal. I don't want for tonight to be just like any regular call, like just like, oh, it's just another, you know, training call. Here we go, Tuesday, right? I would really like it if tonight was something special that it actually meant a little bit of a shift or a transformation even in who you are and that it helps you. I really want tonight, I want this week, when you go out there for this week and you get a couple new people to join your team and you inspire a couple new people and people uh, reach out that you remember and you go, wow, it's because of tonight. It's because of what I learned tonight. And what I'm about to share with you really has the power to do that because this is some information that totally transformed my life about now, ooh, I'd say about seven years ago. And ever since that time of learning this information, being able to apply it, uh, you know, my life has completely opened up and I'm now living out the life that I have now, which is being a freedompreneur. And I get to work from home. We get to travel a bunch. We went to, um, uh, we're going to Brazil for 30 days in January, which I'm totally looking forward to. And then we spent the last uh, 43 days uh, on the road throughout the uh, summer traveling the East Coast. And I've been able to do a lot of cool things. And I'm just sharing this with you because this is what this information can do for you. But here's what happens when you start to write and take notes. You don't listen <laughs> because you're focused on taking the notes. And the first thing I want to ask you today is how do you listen? And just like type your answers in, you know, the chat. How do you listen? When, when we're out in the world, think about it. Think about it. Look, if you've got a husband, you know, if you've got somebody you're with, then you know that sometimes you're talking, but the other person isn't listening. Yes? Any, everybody know that experience? Anybody had the experience of knowing, you know, you're, you're saying something to somebody and you absolutely know that they're not listening. And we have to also be honest, how often do we do that to other people? Can we say yes? If, do we do that with other people by a show of hands or a yes in the chat box? <laughs> awesome. And here's the deal, guys. Participate with me tonight. You see, it's a conversation. The more you engage with me, the more you're going to get out of it. So, you know, put your hand up, say yes, you know, take the cell phone, throw it away for an hour to turn off Facebook, really stay with us because I promise you're going to get a lot of out tonight. So I want you to think about the different ways people listen. And I hope you can see this. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you're kind good. Of? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So this is my horrible drawing of an ear. <laughs> All right. That's what that is. If you're wondering, it kind of looks like a peanut. Sometimes people tell me. <laughs> so here's the deal. I want you to first to become aware of the way that you listen. You see, you have a block from listening. And this block keeps you from connecting with people in such a way where they feel like, this is somebody I could join. This is somebody I could follow. Because what you do is leadership. That's what you do. You're in the, you are in the game of leadership. And your only job, from my perspective, is to become the best leader you can be where you're at. And here's the deal. Every single one of you, no matter where you're at, is a leader because you're here. And now you just simply have to show others how to do what you're doing. But these things that I'm going to show you tonight could be getting in the way. My hunch is they are, but, you know, you be the judge of that. <laughs> All right, cool. So think about how you listen. So the first way you listen is through filters. 
filters, meaning right now I'm giving you a bunch of information, but your mind wants to filter things out. It wants to filter out what it likes, and it or it wants to filter in what it likes, and it wants to filter out what it doesn't like. You know, Nick, this sounds good, except the part where, you know, we have to go talk to people. I don't want to do that part. <laughs> right? So we filter that part out. Right? This sounds good, except the part where he's asking me to take a selfie and put it online. I don't want to do that part. <laughs> oh, so we, good at that. Yeah, all right, perfect. So, yes, yeah, selective hearing, Holly. That's right. We're filtering it. This is one way that we hear. This is one way that we listen, and we should know this. It's all good. It's okay to admit that you do this. I do this. We all do this. This is just simply becoming aware of it, and once you're aware of it, you can remove it. You can go beyond it. The other way that you listen is through judgment. You listen through judgment. Some of you have already judged me, but that's okay. I've already judged you. <laughs> you see, we can't help it. It's okay to admit it. It's okay. It's rather than saying, don't judge people, which is impossible to do. And I'll share with you why it's impossible. It's impossible because your mind is designed to label things and a judgment is a label. That's what your mind is designed to do. The only thing you have to be aware of is this, that you are not what your mind is telling you, but we'll get into that. All right, all you have to know now is that you're going to do it. So, so you've judged me. Some of you have already said, I like it, I don't like it. Some of you are like, is he like Indian? Is he Arabic? Is he like, you know, what is he? I'm not sure. You know, you're still trying to figure it out, right? Maybe I'll let you know. So, you know, right? You're, it's okay. It's natural. All you have to do is be aware of it. And now because we're talking about it, some of you have already become aware of it. Indian, I bet. I'll, uh, I will let you know. All right, cool. So um, the other way we listen is rehearsal. Rehearsal is when someone's speaking to you, and I promise you, you do this in the sales situations. Someone is speaking to you, and you're rehearsing in your head what you're going to say to them, right? Or in an argument, right? <laughs> they're like, you know, they're saying, look, you know, you did this, da, da, da. And you, you're not even listening to them because in your head, you're like, oh man, as soon as I get my opening, I'm coming in with, you know, I'm coming in with this, this missile here, right? <laughs> Pre-plan the flight. That's right. So, you know, we, we, uh, we, a good comeback. That's right. So we rehearse, uh, we rehearse what we are, are doing. We deflect. Deflecting is the process of, oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that as well. Or we simply just ignore it, right? You know, guys, we're really good at this, actually. We're probably better this than this than you guys are. We can just, like, we can just, like, deflect it. Like, we have this thing. It's, a, like, a deflector. It's internal. And it's just, like, boom. No, nope, I'm not engaging. No, that's it. I'm done, right? And, uh, you know, so, you know, we should know that. We should be aware of that. So deflecting. And the other thing that you do is mapping. Now, mapping is an interesting one. Mapping is when you are listening for what you already know. Because here's something you should know about yourself. You love to be right. You know, you love to be right. You know, you hate being wrong. You know, me too. I know, right? Hate being wrong. So we like to showcase what we know as a way to show how, like, you know, we know something, right? To kind of show up in, in the world. So what we end up doing is while we're listening, this is why I'm going to therapy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so why we, why we map and mapping is the process of listening to what I'm saying, but trying to map it to something you already know that could sound in your mind. Like, Oh, I heard Anthony Robbins say the same thing. Yeah. You know what? I know that quote. I know that quote, <laughs> right? Marion Williamson, mm -hmm, I know it, right? See, that's all mapping. That's, that's always your mind is, and again, your mind is naturally going to do it. Your mind is going to do all of this stuff. But here's the deal. Now that you're aware that you're doing it, 
can you stop it? At least for a brief second or moment. Yes. One person says yes. <laughs> One person can do Ashley's it. Ashley's shaking her head yes, too. Probably <laughs> saying maybe. See if, see if you can. I don't know if I could. Okay, so it's the therapy. <laughs> maybe. All right, here's, here's the game you're playing to, with me today. If that's a hard one. Here's the game that you're playing with me today, okay? Here's the game. For the next, you know, whatever, half an hour that I've got you, right? You are going to be gentle with yourself, and you are just going to simply be aware of when you're doing it. But you're not going to judge it. You're not going to be like, oh, gosh, I'm doing it again. Oh, I'm do no, you're just, just once, you've, once you've just become aware of it, just be like, oh, wow, look, there, I'm thinking about the kids again. Oh, look, I'm thinking about what he said earlier to me. I'm thinking about what she, you know, what she was wearing and how it did not like match and it was no good. And then, you know, what all these, all these things that are, that are floating on up, going on up here, all you got to do is every time you become aware that, oh, look, my thought has taken me down that direction, just come back to me. I'll still be going, I promise you. Okay, so you just come back to me. So your only job, space off, guilty. Yeah, we all do it. So this is why I asked you not to write because writing distracts you. And here's the deal. Now, now you may be thinking, why, why are you sharing this with us when this is supposed to be a business training? All of that is in the way when you're prospecting. In fact, that some of you, that's so much in the way that you're not even prospecting. Because all of that's going on, and it's going on all up here. How many of you have a committee running in your mind? Like, it's like, should I do this? Should I do Yes. Oh, look at them hands. Woo. Woo. The committee. All right. Let's talk about that committee. All right. <laughs> so, the way you listen, it's like, it's a huge committee. <laughs> Think about every way that you can possibly listen is like a committee member. How many of you have, have, I, have, have you ever seen the movie In and Out? I think that's what it's called. It's a Disney, a Pixar movie. Inside Out. Inside Out. How, how many of you seen the movie Inside Out? Ashleen, Inside Out. That's right. Okay. That movie is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So every way that you listen is a committee member. And everything that you think is a committee member. So all the positive stuff is a committee member. All the negative stuff is a committee member. And they all have their right to their seat. Believe me, they all serve you in some way. That's why you love them. That's why you hang on to them. They, they, are, they are serving you in some way. That's why they're hanging out. So I want to share a distinction with you. And the distinction is what I call content versus context. All right, content versus context. In this picture, this is a cup and the cup has water in it. What is the content of this picture? What is the content of the cup? It's half full of water. It's half full of water. Well. The content is just water. Oh. But, but I, I appreciate the positive attitude. <laughs> I love where you're going with it. <laughs> but the content is just wa is water. The content is water, right? That's what's in the cup. Look, I've got a glass of water, right? So what is the context? If the cup, if the, if the, if the content is water, what is the context? <laughs> Water is life. <laughs> the context, yes, the glass, the cup, the cup, yes, thank you. The cup. All right. So, what is the content of your business? So type it in. Tell me the different content, and I'm going to write it down. Hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Let me get a pen. Okay, I'm ready for you. I'm going to write it down. I want you guys to tell me what is the content of your business. People, relationships, 
helping others, helping people, help people, new friends, making a difference, helping, share our journey, helping, accountability, fitness, yes, fitness. How about the products? Think about your business as a business context. You guys are awesome. Like you're like, you guys are so, you're fantastic. Hold on a sec. Shakeology. Thank you. The workouts. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Shakeology programs. That's right. Money. Brazil butt lift. <laughs> and now I'm curious now. You've got me, you've got me intrigued. Okay. So, um, so, um, Money. What about money? Yeah. Right. This is a business, right? We're here to do income. Yes. Please. This is your opportunity to be selfish and selfish means self care. So speak about the things that you want, right? I hope you're in this opportunity, debt freedom. Yeah. I hope you're in this opportunity to make money and be okay with that. Be very intentional about that. All right. Fantastic. All right, you guys get it. Healthy lifestyle. That's right. Marketing. Okay, all of that, all of that stuff that you guys mentioned, I wrote it all down here. That's all the content. So what is the context of your business? If that's all content, what is the context of your business? Me, me, our mindset. Wellness coach. Yes, you guys are absolutely right. The context is you. <laughs> the context is you. The culture. Your personal and team culture. You see, that's what sets the tone for your life. Not just for your business, but your entire life. Here is why this is important. Here's why I'm telling you this. Most people want to change the content of their life. I want to change the content of my life. I want more money. I want better health. That's all content, right? I want you know, to have a college fund for my kids. I want better relationships. I want a better relationship with myself. All of it is content. Context, though, is the space which allows the content to show up. Meaning, let's say I, this, let's say this glass holds 500 milliliters of water. Let's say it holds 500 milliliters of water. And I started pouring more content into this water. You see, what would happen? It would just spill over. No matter how much I try to push, that's right, overflow. No matter how much content I try to push into this glass, it is not going to go in because there is not enough space. So, what would I need to do? Anybody? What do I need to do? If I want more water, what do I need to do? Brought in your context. Drink it. Get a bigger glass. That's right. That's right. What I need to do is get a bigger glass. I need to get a bigger glass. Now, I could empty out. Let's say I wanted something a little, you know, it's, well, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday night, yeah. so no one should be doing this. But let's say it's Friday night, right? You yeah, know? And, uh, hey, it's like, you know, we're gonna, I want something a little bit better than water tonight, right? Well, what I could do is I could empty out the water. See, some of you have s stuff in your space. You know what I'm talking about, right? You have stuff there. It occupies a lot of your mind, a lot of your energy, and it's taking up room for abundance. It's taking up room for the good stuff that you want, 
right? So we have to be able to clear this space. So that's who you are. You're a space. Now, what happens if I put some fire? I don't have a lighter, but let's say, what happens if I put some fire underneath? Let's say this was a plastic cup. It what would happen? Cup. That's right. It would burn up and it would spill. What is the fire represented of? What does the fire represent? What, what does the fire represent in this scenario? Pain. Outside circumstance. I'm not delusional to think that there is not outside circumstance that is influencing the way that you are showing up. But here's the deal. They're influencing, but the way you show up is always in your control. You just got to get good at that practice. And it believe, it's a skill to learn. That's it. It's a skill to learn. So the fire is representative of, you know, the economy and, you know, this going on and that going on and somebody passing away or the relation, you know, maybe you're having a tough go at, at your personal relationship, but you see the context, Trump, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, context, if it's strong, yeah, it may feel the burn, but it won't spill out. So not only the bigness of your space, but the strength of that space, this is what matters. This is the most important thing to work on. When you work on this, everything changes. Anything that you, like, is right now you want to attain but you can't, you have to realize that it's simply outside of your space. So there's only one thing that you have to do, which is start to expand your space. Say yes or give me a thumbs up or something if you're with me, if this is making sense. Like, are you getting, say yes if you're getting value here. Is this making sense? Can you see? Yes. Okay. Do you see how this is applying? Yes. Love it. Okay. Perfect. Just got to check in. Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So you may want to ask yourself now, <laughs> I say you may because this is where we're going, so you should, <laughs> is ask yourself now, <laughs> um, well, what creates my context? Like, how do I know what my context is? Well, your context, all you need to do to answer that question is look around at your life. That is what you have created. Now, for some of you, you might be like, all right, this is awesome. I love it. For some of you, you may be like, uh, I like some of it. There's some other parts, you know, I could use a little tweaking, some parts I could change. And for some of you, you just maybe be like in tears right now, and it's okay. <laughs> right? Right? It's totally cool. No matter where you're at, I want you to know it's totally cool. It's totally, totally cool. In fact, the more you just accept where you're at, the easier this journey is going to be for you. Because acceptance, don't ever mistake acceptance as giving in. No, acceptance is the first real step to change. Is the first is saying, this is where I'm at. And then you have to deal with the reality. So here's what stops us from accepting us and and here's what's creating here's what's creating this context this is a distinction we call reality versus story reality versus story all right you live in reality right yeah some people are not sure are you, hello? Are you here? <laughs> right? Yeah. This is not like a, like a deep question. Like, you know, do you live in reality. We're going to get deep in a sec, but not right now. <laughs> right? So we agree that we live in reality. But here's the deal. We're all experiencing this reality different, right? The matrix. Absolutely. Right? Are, are we experiencing this reality in different ways? Yeah. Right, my experience of it is different to yours, different to Brittany, to Hillary. It's different to Vicky. Right, this is the, we're experiencing it differently. 
Why is that? It's because while you live in reality, you also simultaneously live in a story about reality. And here's the deal. Your reality that you're experiencing is in direct correlation or like direct dance to your story about reality. You may not even know what your story about reality is. In fact, my guess is you don't even know what it is because unless you've maybe been guided there, it's sometimes difficult to see. But I want, I want to share just a little story. Vicky, you have to totally keep me on time because I have no idea how much time we're at or like, so, you know. Okay, you're good. Okay, you're good. cool. So just give me like a 10-minute warning <laughs> or something like that. Okay. If, if cool. there's only two people left, we went way too long. <laughs> okay, so, okay, sounds good. All right. <laughs> I was like, that just popped in my head. I'm like, I better say this now. <laughs> okay. You're fine. All right. But, all right, back to back, back to reality. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, your life is in direct dance with your story about reality, but you may not even know what your story is. And my hunch is you don't because most of us don't. Again, unless we have specifically looking for it. And see, this conversation today is designed to help you see your stories right from the way you listen. Because that's a, that, the way you listen is a very good clue into the deeper story that's buried underneath there. It's, the way you listen is kind of a manifestation. It's a, it's a result, not a starting point. That's why, you know, motivation. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell you something. It's a little side tangent. I, I hate being called a motivational speaker. I barely ever use the word hate, but I use it on this. I hate being called a motivational speaker, speaker, but people find me motivational. But I'm like, no, it is impossible to be a motivational speaker because it is impossible for me to motivate you. Because it is impossible for me to give you a feeling. I cannot give you a feeling because feelings happen inside of you. What is a feeling? What you call joy is a certain chemistry in your body. What you call uh, unmotivated or lethargic, right, <laughs> right. Is, a chem is a certain chemistry in your body, right? When you feel sad, it's a certain chemistry happening in your body. This is what is happening. So I can't give you a chemistry. You can only give yourself a chemistry. But here's the deal. What you can do is mimic. So if you happen to be like, wow, I feel motivated, well, it's because we also have the, the, the ability to mimic each other. I didn't take chem in school, but I didn't take chem in school. All right, cool. So here's the deal. I want to share a little story. All right, so why I hate being called motivational speaker? I can't give you motivation. You can only give it to yourself, right? So always know that however you feel, it is never happening outside of you. It is always happening in you. And it is a certain chemistry in your body. So therefore, if you know that, you can also then be intelligent with your emotions. And when you are intelligent with your emotions, meaning you have the ability to direct the way that you feel, you then have the ability to direct the results that you achieve. Plain and simple. That's the mastery. Once you can, because then you can face fears. You can, you can instill the emotion of courage when it's needed, compassion when it's needed, right? You can use all the different emotions, even anger. People say, oh, Nick, you're so passionate. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just an angry dude that's learned how to turn it into a positive emotion, <laughs> right? It's just I learned to transmute that. So here's the deal. I want to I give you a little story about how, how stories play out in our life. All right, I'm going to give you a scenario. The scenario is 17-year-old girl, she pees on a stick and a plus sign shows up. Let's say in this moment, she's in fear, whatever, she she's has kind of fear, judgments, all of these little voices are going to be heightened. Let's say she says this to herself, oh no, my life is over. You see, in that moment, she doesn't know this, but in that moment, she has actually created a filter or a judgment, a strong emotional bond to a, that story. Because here's the deal. 
in that story that I told, what is the reality of that story? Vicki, I'm going to ask you because I know he's just a... She's pregnant. That's right. The reality is she's pregnant. That's the reality. What is the story about reality in that situation? She thinks her life is over. That's right. The reality of it. Look at, look at life as it is. The reality of it is she's pregnant. Anything above that is a story. The, oh, my life is over is a story because the truth is she's 17 years old and the reality is she's a baby. She's got a long life to live. But remember, do we live in reality or do we live more in the story about reality? So this is how this works. Maybe the next day, instead of sitting at the front of the class, she decides to sit at the back of the class. Maybe the next week she decides to drop out of school altogether. Maybe it's 10, 20 years down the road and she decides she wants to start a business. She wants to change her outlook on life. She wants to transform her relationship with herself. She wants to enhance her experience and the amount of joy she's having. She wants abundance. All right. All these things sound familiar. These are the things we want. This is this. I assume this is why you're here, right? You're here because you want something right? More than what you have now. If not, you wouldn't be here. And it's okay. That's, you should want that. That desire is natural. And so society has told you to repress that desire and you shouldn't want? That's bullshit. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> right? You, that is natural. And it is who you are. It's trying, you are trying to come out and to create. That's who you are. And so it's remembering that. And so this is how that story plays out into this girl. Now, I'll tell you another story, and this is a real story. It's about a girl that I, that I know personally. I, um, her name is Jackie. And what happened was Jackie at a very young age was told that she would never have kids. She had problems with her reproductive system. So Jackie, around 17, uh, peed on a stick and a plus sign showed up. And Jackie, despite what anybody else said, said, oh, my goodness, this is a miracle. See, because Jackie was told she would never have a baby, and Jackie always wanted a baby, but hey, she thought she couldn't have one. So this was a miracle. So Jackie decided that she's going to keep this baby, and she's going to have this baby if it's her opportunity to have a baby. And Jackie did have the baby. Jackie now today actually has three babies <laughs> and is living her life as a mom, which is phenomenal. You see, because Jackie, because of her circumstances, told herself a different story. And here's the deal. The story that you're telling yourself, for the most part, was made at an unconscious level, meaning you didn't, you didn't choose to that story. Let me ask you guys, I want to know, where do your stories come from? How did you get your stories? Family. Yes. Where else? Life. Yes. Just search situations or environment. Absolutely. Friends. Absolutely. Family and friends. Yes. Circumstances. Yes. Interactions with others. Yes. Society. Yes. Media. Yes, right? Social media nowadays. Social media has a massive influence on people's lives. So what's your Facebook page look like, right? All of those messaging, all that messaging is influencing you. But now you are conscious of it. So now you can choose. And for some of you, it's going to be difficult. It's like breaking an addiction, but I got to know... I got to know what Trump said last night. Like, I, I just got to know, right? You know that I got to know feeling? You know, I, it's like, right? It's like for some of you, I know I know that, right? Like, you know, like it's like, oh, oh. But this is where we begin the journey of training the mind. To be able 
to choose your life and the first, and all you ever have to do is choose in the moment it's not the big decisions it's the small daily decisions am i going to engage in this training right now or am i going to text that person am i going to get out of my comfort zone and make that call or am i going to just wait for another day it's in those little choices every single day. Am I going to choose the apple or am I going to choose the cake? Right? It doesn't seem like a big choice in the moment. Because as, as a singularity, it's not. But as a compound effect, it's, a, it's, you know, it's directing your life. You're nothing but a result of the choices you've made. Now, here's the only deal. I give you compassion and credit because most of us unknowingly – have made those choices subconsciously because we've been living through these filters of family, society, media, right? Following the pattern. Someone said the matrix earlier, following along, just, you know, going along with, well, this is how mom and dad did it. And this is how society has done it. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not like condemning it. I'm not making it to be negative. All I'm saying is, are you just aware of it? Are you, how how much aware are you of your of your patterned existence? <laughs> They're like this guy's not very motivational. <laughs> All right, cool. I promise you, I'll pick it back up. But you got to get to this point at least where you can start to see how many of you can know what I'm talking about. Say yes if you understand the story and how it is showing up in your life. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Fantastic. A little, yes. Hey, look, if you're not getting it, awesome. Thank you. If you're not getting it, if you're kind of like, I don't know, I'm a little lost. I'm kind of losing it. That's okay. Just commit to one thing. Just stick with me. That's it. Don't worry about, don't map. Mapping is that is I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to understand it, meaning you're trying to put it to something you know. But if you've never heard this before, I promise you, if you were like me, you would have been like, what, what, I, what is he talking about? Because for me, it was mind blowing information. Like I didn't know this about myself, but I started to see how my stories were playing out in my life. All right. So we know that we create all of these stories and some of these stories are passed down to us, but some of these stories we personally make, in fact, we make a good chunk of our own story and this is key, but we do it at very young ages, uh, normally through life events. At some point in time, you figured out, oh, I'm all alone on the world. You know, someone abandoned you. Someone hurt you. Mom, dad didn't show up the way you wanted them to. Something. I don't know what it is for you. You know what it is, right? You figured out, oh, I'm all alone. Yeah, you probably had moments where you figured out something was wrong with you. Somebody at school said something, you know, they pointed out something here, something there, you know, any of that kind of jazz, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? And that stuck. It was very emotionally painful. So you banked it. You stored it as a memory. You believed it. You believed it. You believed not what they said, but you believed that something was wrong with you. That's what you believe. I believe it about me. It's okay. We just have to know we believe this, right? And, you know, um, you know, at some point in time, too, you know, you figured out that, um, that, um, there's, uh, that there's, there's, just, there's just something not right here. <laughs> you know, there's just something not right about what's going on with you and inside. And we all have that. We all have that, that, that kind of inner suffering. And so we create these stories as a way to protect that inner suffering. See that? We, we are our worst critics, absolutely. We create stories out of fear in those moments, in that moment when that person said that thing to you. And remember, you know you remember it, yeah? Yeah, you're like thinking about it. You're going, oh, oh, oh if I was there now. <laughs> I know some moves, you know, <laughs> right? Like, you know, right. So, 
right? You never forget, right? Those moments, you, everybody knows for themselves what I'm talking about. In those moments, because of the pain and the emotional pain, the discomfort, the unknowing, because it was like something was, was, was different now, in that unknowing zone, you created a story to protect yourself. That's why you believe your stories serve you. That's why you're so like you hold on to them because you hold on to them because they're kind of like shields. But the problem is, is anything that I'm blocking, I'm trying to keep in, I'm also blocking out. So I, over time, I end up blocking out my networks, my opportunities. I end up blocking people out. I end up becoming, my life ends up to become shrinking rather than expanding. So why do we create stories? We create stories because we create this thing called a comfort zone, right? And we love our comfort zone. Oh my goodness, do we love it, <laughs> right? We are, you, man, we love our comfort zone so much that, you know, um, we protect it. We defend it. You know, we argue to, 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 you know, some of you have already shut off. Why? Because you're like, no, nope, this threatens my comfort zone. Right? Right? This does. Because these kind of conversations, that's what I'm here to do. I hope you know that. <laughs> I'm here to threaten your comfort zone. Right? Um, because that's the way that you're going to expand in your life. And the beauty about what you're doing and about what you've got here uh, with Vicky and this team here is you've got a team. You're not doing it to, alone. You've got to plug in in business for yourself, but never by yourself. That's why this model works so well, right? But you got to plug in. You have to stay connected and that's on you, right? But all you got to do is stay connected. And I promise you environment trumps will. Meaning all you have to do is stay close. And if you stay close and you stay plugged in, I promise you the environment will start to nourish and wash your mind, right? People are like, oh my God, he's talking about brainwashing. Yes, yes I am. But in a positive way, because what are your brainwashed right now, but just in a negative way, right? You might as well choose, <laughs> you know, right? You know, you might as well choose a way that's going to serve you. Right. So what happens is we create our these comfort zones and they're invisible. And this space, this space here is what? The cup. The space is you. The comfort zone is you. This is where you're comfortable. And this is the space. And this is the space your life shows up. So your bank account and your health and your relationships and all, everything, 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 all the content. And so if you want more money, guess what you have to do? Get a bigger what? Cup, right? That's what we had to do. We got to expand that. As we expand that, we get better. But there's a process to expanding it. That's what I've learned. That's what I've spent the last seven years of my life doing, is learning this process, applying it, helping other people applying it fascinated by it <laughs> if you can't tell <laughs> all right i love it this is this is you know it's, it's it's helping people in this way you know lights me up right because i believe that this information here can actually transform not just businesses and life but our world i think when people understand that they can tell their own story and they can break from the patterns of their lineage <laughs> I'll call it, and their past and their own choices. Like it's not just linear, it's we ourselves are making these choices every single day. Then you can live a created life. And that's what being a freedom preneur is all about. And that is what you guys are creating for yourself in, in, in this model, in this team. All right. So how do you transform your story, right? Because now we know we have these stories. We know that they've come from our past. They know we've come, they, the really strong ones have come from our painful moments, right? We know that, oh, okay, so to, to, you know, to then move on, we have to get a bigger cup or we have to empty out some of the dirty water that's in there, right? So 
how to transform your stories. Now imagine this circle here, which is kind of not really a circle because that's just the way I drew, right? So just imagine it's a circle at first, <laughs> right? And then just say this space here is represents all there is to know about everything, all the knowledge there is to know about everything, everything there is to know about everything. How much of it do you think you know? A little dot, perhaps. Yeah, most people would agree. Very small amount. <laughs> That's right. So a tiny amount, a tiny amount. All right, fantastic. So we all agree that if in comparison to all the knowledge there is to know about everything, we personally know this speck maybe, right? We know that much. But how do we live? Do you live like you know little or do you live like you know it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me tell let me tell you, all right? I already know that. Okay? Or it's like let me tell you how th this should be run, okay? And man, we have so many opinions and judgments and, and we've got instructions for everything and everyone, right? Because we live, we live under the false illusion. It's the human dilemma. It is the ultimate human dilemma that, you know, most of us aren't even aware of is that we live under the false mindset that we know it all. When in reality, we know diddly, like we know nothing, like we are so lost. We don't even know what up or down is in the truest sense of the word. This is a round planet that's spinning around a massive ball of fire. That's also, as we can tell, spinning around something we don't really know. You know, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Like we are so like, so lost but we hate the fact that we're lost. So we create stories. We've created whole societies and structures. We go to war. We go to war to protect our stories. Right? So that's how much this is playing out. But you have to see on your life, in your individual, your life, this is about you tonight, how is it playing out in your life? And are you choosing the way it's playing out in your life? So I want to give you a little bit more credit. First of all, I want to say that, you know, you know, a little bit more than that dot. I'm going to say, you know, a good pie that much. Well, you guys are, I mean, at least you're here on this call. It means you're that you're, 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 you're it means you're smart, right? You got to know at least that much. <laughs> all right. So here's the deal. This is, I'm going to call this the world of, you know, and you know that you know. Okay? So what do I mean by you know and you know that you know? All right. I know that I'm speaking English. And I know that I know that I'm speaking English. You see, I know that I know English. The second piece of pie here, I'm going to call the world of you know that you don't know. Meaning, I know that I know that I speak English, and I know that I don't know how to speak Italian. I know that. Because I know that I don't know how to speak Italian, what can I do? Learn Italian. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Learn. Because I know that I don't know, I can now learn, right? I could go, I can go to, um, uh, what, what's, what's the, Rosetta Stone? Rosetta, that's it. That's, it. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. I can go get Rosetta Stone. I can go to Italy. I could do whatever I want. I can learn. This type of learning is called informative learning. It is the learning of memorization. It is what they do in school right? Memorize this book, write this essay on it. Memorize these flashcards, write this test on it. That's, it's called informative learning. It's, it's information-based learning. Very valuable, not, you know, putting it down. All I'm saying is it's just one type of learning. 
Because what we have is this, all this space here. All of this space here. And this space represents the world of you don't know. And you don't know that you don't know. You know? I just threw that in to confuse you. Okay. So you, know, you don't know and you don't know that you don't know. Let me ask you something. What can you do about something you don't know and you don't know that you don't know it? What can you do? Not a dang thing. That's right. Not a dang thing. Just like that. <laughs> right, right? Why? Because you're, it's not in your awareness. You're, you're unaware of it. You're just unaware of it. So let me share a little story, a personal story about how this happened for me. So I went to this uh, three-day course, this seminar, very similar to like what you're hearing tonight. And this is, uh, and uh, I, um, I'm sitting in this seminar and we're going through all these different exercises and these different type of conversations. And we do this exercise where the facilitator is, um, you know, taking us through this fear exercise. And so we all have to close our eyes and we have to, he's giving us this scenario that's like somebody's trying to hurt us and they're chasing us and he's trying to scare us. And some people in the room are like freaking out. Like they're like crying. They're like, ah! and all this stuff's going on right some people in the room are laughing like they're just totally cracking up because they're just like this is uh, the dumbest thing ever and me i'm sitting there like stewing like like kind of angry and frustrated like, like oh what this is so dumb what a ridiculous thing blah 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 and so at the end of the exercise the exercise wraps up the facilitator says all right we're going to do a 15 minute break and, and then come back so I march right up to this guy and I'm like all angry and I'm like, this is bullshit and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I'm going on about I'm not getting anything from this and everybody here is crying and doing this and I'm just blah, blah, blah. And he very calmly, like he just, you know, sits there and smiles and very calmly waits for me to be done my rant. And then he says, and you're angry, Nick, aren't you? And I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm angry. And he said, and you're frustrated, aren't you? I said, oh, yeah, I'm frustrated. And then he smiles and he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm really angry and now I'm really frustrated. So I go to lunch or wherever we're on break and I sit down and I'm going to eat something. And it was like a light bulb went off. It was like an aha moment. Like, oh, my goodness. I am angry and frustrated you see up to this point i thought it was just the world was dumb and they were pissing me off like i could tell you every reason why this was dumb and that was dumb and this is corrupt and this doesn't work and this is, and and why i was angry and frustrated in fact i remember my high school um, principal asking me nick why are you so angry and me flipping off like i'm not angry so I, I remember, I, I learned this, I go to my parents and I go, I go to my parents and I ask my parents, I say, hey guys, did you know that I am angry and frustrated? And they say, yes. And I said, well, why didn't you ever tell me? And they said, because you would get angry and frustrated with us. <laughs> right? So the deal is, is that what we think is happening to us is really happening through us. And what you don't know and you don't know that you don't know is that the stories that were created in your past are lurking in what we're going to call your blind spots. You see, I didn't know I was angry or frustrated. Everybody else around me knew it. But then I became aware of it. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's me. I'm the one with the shitty attitude. And that's why I got shitty results. And so my journey began. And my journey was to discover who I am and how to transform my thinking. And as I transform my thinking, 
I transformed the results and I grew an awesome business and I get to hang out with people like Vicky and you guys and I get to do this and I get to do it from anywhere I want because I work from my laptop and you guys have an opportunity to create something for yourselves and your families and you're totally worth it. You're totally worth it. That's why you're here. You just got to tell yourself the story. You don't even have to, like, here's the deal. You don't even have to go back into your past if you just get good at telling the story now that you're worth it. And as you tell yourself that you're worth it and you realize it and you accept your own worthiness of it, then the, uh, the stories just start dropping off because you start, you're just engaged in the things that you want and the things that you know are going to improve your life. So give yourself permission. Uh, give yourself permission as well to go to hangoutwithcoachstick.com <laughs> and uh, sign up uh, to join up on my newsletter. And you can get some shows and some cool stuff there. And every Monday I send out uh, more transformational mindset information. And you can learn more about the Freedom Preneurs Club. I've also got my book coming out. Woo! First book. And it's coming out uh, early November. So you can hang out with me. Hang out with CoachNick.com. Thanks, Vicky, so much for... Uh, inviting me here today. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and giving me your attention. I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you so much, Nick. That was freaking awesome. Everyone kept messaging me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for this call. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. It's not me. It's not me. I just found the guy. I mean, <laughs> I'll take all credit, but you know, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much. Hey, Nick, before we, um, do you have a few minutes to answer any questions? Oh, 100%. I'll totally do Q&A. But got here's the thing. You guys have to step out of that comfort zone and unmute yourself in order to ans ask a question. How about that deal? <laughs> I like that deal. I think it's a great <laughs> deal. Don't worry. I'm nice. <laughs> so I do. Uh, Corinne, will you go ahead and ask the question that you posted in the chat box? Hi, Nick. Hey. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, so I think we were, I think the question was related to we don't know what you don't know. And, and then you guys said, how do you kind of get around that? And then the answer seemed to be you can't. And I mean, I could have misunderstood. But I was just wondering um, if like my first reaction was you do it by just continuing to learn. And then new situations present themselves that, you know, you never would have known had you not gone outside and started to search for new things. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that the deal is, is, is I think you're right. You're already on the train because you're searching, right? So it's uh, you know, seek and you shall find meaning just keep going. And what's going to happen is things are going to open up for you and new awareness is going to be, is going to be born. Right. And uh, I think um, if I didn't convey that, then now, thank you for asking the question. So I can make sure that I convey that, that the, the answer to figuring out of what you don't know and you don't even know you don't know is to keep plugging in here and keep plugging into personal development and growth because what happens is as you've uh, I think you've stated is that you end up opening up the other thing too is ask yourself who am I being or what is my intention when I do something right so not what you're doing but who you're being is so much more uh, important right? It, and that is what you don't know. And you don't, you see what I didn't know is that I didn't know my way of being was angry and frustrated. It's not like I was angry and frustrated all the time, but underlining, I kind of was right. Like it under, like kind of underneath, like right there, you know, you got the first mask, the first story, you know, the, Hey, how's everyone doing? You know, the, like the, you know, uh, we all love each other. That first one. And then that goes away real quick. And then you're like, yeah, look at that. But <laughs> then the second, then the second personality shows up, right? That second personality, um, you know, the more that you, um, realize how trapped you are in that second personality, then the more you're becoming aware of what you don't know and you don't know, you don't know. So my, my, I was trapped in, in anger and frustration, but as soon as I became aware of it, meaning as soon as I now know it, I'm out of it because only can I be out of it to see it. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it does. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm long winded. Sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> They're used to it. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any questions for Nick? It's like free coaching, guys. Right. <laughs> I pay him to do this, and you guys get a free <laughs> take advantage. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like anything even to do with your business, recruiting, marketing, sales. Well, I'll ask another. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take advantage. Don't notice I'm long-winded, too. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's cool. Um, okay, so I really love the presentation, but I'll admit there were a lot of parts, and I'm like, oh, I didn't quite grasp it all. Um, yeah. And so, Vicki, you recorded it, right? Or I did, yeah. Oh, okay. So well, I can always go back. Um, but with that, with everything we've been presented, what would you suggest is, like, the one sort of key next step for us other than going to the website but you know like really is there something that you know like one sort of lesson that sort of trumps the rest i don't know it's not well said but yeah no i think i think i understand the question like you know what's the most important thing to focus on let's say out of this call uh-huh where should we right take yeah whatever? what should we do it's a great question all right nick that sounds great what do we do well the first thing is you go to hang out with coachnick.com and you register. All right, that's the first thing. Okay. Second thing. <laughs> Second thing, always be promoting. Okay, no. Second thing for real is and and first thing is to start to work on how do you listen? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, because that is the point of awareness. Meaning the way that we listen and the way that we show up and be present to somebody or to a situation, this is the key. And your practice is simply to stay as present as you can throughout your day. Because if you just incorporate that, and I say if you just, like it's like, you know, no big deal. Just be <laughs> present, you know. Look, I'll tell you something, okay. The mind is harder to control than a, wind, than a flame in the wind. Yeah. The mind is harder to control than a flame in the wind. So you can imagine a candle in the wind. Like it's, that's your mind, right? <laughs> right? Going here, going there. It's like a million miles an hour, right? So you're not going to control it. But what you can learn to do is direct it. Right? So the process of learning to direct it is the process of engaging in the moment. Meaning, what am I doing right now? Well, I'm talking to you. So let me be here fully with you. Let me share this with you. And let me try to give as much as I can to the moment. And what it means to give to the moment means let me give my attention to the moment. That's what giving is. You know, have, has anybody ever heard giving starts the receiving process? Yeah, we all know that. Yeah. I've always wondered, well, what do they mean by giving? What am I giving? Is it do I have to give money to get money? Do I have to give any, you know, some, the, what I've come to learn is giving is my attention. My attention is the most precious thing in the world. It directs the way I use my time. It directs the things that I engage in. And so the more you practice where my attention is going, then the better you become at directing your mind or retelling yourself a positive story, let's say that. So start with your listening and being aware to how you're listening. And just use that as a practice, as a practice, as a practice. Okay. Thank you. That'll keep me busy for a long time. <laughs> it's a lifetime practice. <laughs> so, I have a question and um, I struggle with this. Like I was talking to Corinne about this today. You know, do you ever get, do we, do we ever get in the funk? Like even as a five-star diamond coach, do I ever get in the funk where I feel like, you know, you start questioning yourself, like, am I even made to do this? Or even as parenting, like, am I made to be a good mom? Am I a good mom? Am I enough? Am I, am I enough as a friend? Am I enough as a spouse? Am I, you know, we, we start questioning ourselves. And I, like, I was honest with Corinne and I said, yeah, I do get in these funks and it lasts probably, you know, sometimes a day, sometimes three days and it comes once a month. But what do you suggest for those of us who struggle with funks, maybe they're in one currently and it's lasting a long time, or maybe they come and go, what would you do? Would it be the same, the same listening process or would it be something different? Yeah. So, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take a, a page from Tony Robbins on this one. Um, I, I think this is brilliant and, and there's, there's different ways to say it, but I think what, what he has laid out is probably one of the simplest and easiest ways to, to get out of funks. 
So we all get into funks. The first thing is to understand um, the motivational like cycle of somebody. So meaning uh, the most highly motivated people in the planet are still only motivated about 35 out of 52 weeks of the year. And that's your top, top, you know, like your highest motive. So even, so don't think that Tony Robbins is getting up every morning or myself or Vicky or anybody is getting up every morning like oh yeah whoa, you know every single morning now all right i kind of get up like everyone else oh 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 gosh okay let's do this <laughs> right you know right and, and and that's just the reality the reality is how are you training your mind so i go back to for me the answer is always about how well am i directing my little voice because my little voice is determining my movement it's saying do i press snooze do i get up do i eat the 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 apple or do I have the cake? Do I, do I prospect for another hour or do I go watch TV? Right? So it's that little voice. It's that battle between, you know, your six inches here that ultimately determines where you're going. So when we're in a funk, what we're saying is what, what do we say joy is? What do we say sadness is? What do we say that is somebody? A emotions. That's right. Chemical and emotions, definitely emotions for sure. Right. Um, but definitely, yeah, but it's a chemical reaction, right. In, in our body, meaning our body is in a state, right. You know, it's in a certain state. Mm -hmm. An emotion is a certain state. And like, you know what an emotion is? An emotion is like, is like the scent of a flower. It is the offshoot of the, of the, of the, the actual thing. Right. So emotion is just your body saying, this is the state I'm in. That's all your emotion is. That's all you have to ever know. So when I'm like, oh man, I feel shitty. It's because there's something going on in my body that makes me feel that way. So I'm just like, oh wait, maybe I need to do something with my body. Beach body, right? Yeah. Okay. No, cool. All right. All right cool. <laughs> nice plug. Right, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So here's the deal, right? Um, all right. So what states do you live in? Well, you live in, in an emotional state. You are always in an emotional state. Right now, in this moment, you are in an emotional state. You also live in a mental state. And your mental state and emotional state, like there's no way that you're thinking happy thoughts and feeling down. You know, it, just does, it just doesn't work that way, right? So mental, emotional state, right? You're also in a physical state. You're in a physical state. You know what? Here's one easy way to feel better. Everybody do this with me, all right? Check out my, check out my lips. Look at them. Okay, I know you can't see them. They're underneath this. This thing I've got going on here. All right, here, here they are. All right, ready? Look at that. <laughs> Try it. Woo. I bet you you feel better already. Why? <laughs> I do. Why? Yeah, why? Why? Because, because your physical state, emotional state, and mental state are always in perfect alignment. This is why people can't lie about the way they feel. Hey, honey, what's wrong? Nothing. Okay, he sees something is wrong. Come on. <laughs> Help us out here. <laughs> we can see that something is wrong. We are not blind. Why? You wear it. You know, you know, you wear it, right? So this, and how does this work? Look, your job is to be joyful because when you get on a prospecting call, when you get on a webinar, when you're in front of someone, when you're sharing somebody your journey with what you're doing, is somebody going to follow you if you're joyful or is somebody going to follow you if you're down? Or are they going to follow joyful, high vibe, right? So this is your job. Your job as the leader, your job here is to, to put yourself always in the best state that you can. So when you're in a funk, the first thing I turn to is the physical state. Let's see what I can do physically. It's way easier than the mental state. So start small, start small. I mean, I learned this thing from a YouTube yoga video. Yeah, that's right. I'm like yoga for beginners, right? You know, right? I'm like 10 minutes, right? And I'm like, okay, let's do this. And this girl, she's awesome. She says, all right, here's the deal. Like, let's say you're, you're struggling to get going. Just lie down on the floor with your back on the floor, like just lie down, like in Shavasana, if you guys know if you're yoga people, right? And then just move, <laughs> just wiggle around. And so I'm like, oh man, 
I can do this. <laughs> this is good. I can do this. I can do this. And you know what? Within a minute, if that, of course, what happens? I've moved my physical state. So now my emotions, emotion, energy in motion, right? So emotion, you get your emotions going, your energy's going, and then you go, yeah, you know what? I can go for the downward dog. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You know, and because you're now moving, right? So when you're in a physical, when you're in a funk, try to adjust your physical state. Um, if that doesn't work, change your environment. I do this a lot. You'll notice if you follow me on Facebook, I encourage everybody to follow me on Facebook. I'm very active on my Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Is um, you'll notice that I work out of coffee shops a lot, right? I'm always in a coffee shop. I'm always working out of a coffee shop. Someone asked me, why do you always work out of a coffee Or someone said to me, I bet I know why you work out of a coffee shop. I said, why do you think I do? He says, it's when you can't work from home, you go to the coffee shop to get you going. And I said, you're absolutely right. I was like, you're the first person who's ever figured out why I'm always in a coffee shop. It's not because I love the coffee that much. It's because it gets me out and changes my environment. Because just like you, the couch is calling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just disciplined enough to just, you know, there's that word. Ooh, discipline, right? I'm just disciplined enough to, to know I, I better just change my state. I just change my state. I go sit in the coffee shop and all of a sudden I'm like, and it's, you know, as soon as you get into it, right? Mm -hmm. Like a few minutes into it, then, then you're in. And then, and then you're like, Oh man, I, I'm so happy. I'm doing it. And then, you know, you take over, right? You rock and roll. It's just that getting over that little hump. I hope that helps. That did. That was awesome. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I like that energy and motion. Emotion. Fantastic. Yeah. The, you know what? These little things, like these kind of little sayings and little quotes, they stay with me throughout the day and I use them. Yeah. Awesome nuggets. And that's what they are. These little nuggets. And you know, it's these little nuggets, man, they make a world of difference. Just to remember these little adjustments, little changes over a period of time transform any any situation whether it's relationship health finances little positive st steps each day very intentional thank you so much you're welcome so um i'm going to post a picture i actually i usually make everyone pose and be super cheesy and stuff but i actually took a really good one a selfie when you had everyone like give the thumbs up so it's superb um <laughs> I'm gonna tag, you guys, I'm going to tag Nick in that photo so you can go harass him all you, all you want. I mean, follow, follow. Um, <laughs> Please do, yeah. So you guys could, yeah, check him out. That, But thank you so much, Nick, for all of this. I did not, like when I messaged you, it was 730. I did not realize it was already an hour gone by because just your, your energy and everything that you were talking about was so amazing. And I personally love working with you. And I love the fact that you, you, um, came on tonight and shared us shared with us so much great information and that you did not make them work because I always make them take notes. So they're probably like, Oh, he can come on anytime. <laughs> <laughs> just tonight, just yeah. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for that. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. And, and thank you so much, Vicky, for inviting me. And just like I said, what you're doing here and everybody here tonight, I so appreciate it. And like I said, follow me on Facebook. It's uh, you know, have fun. Have fun while you're building this business. It's important that you guys are having tons of fun. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. Everyone have a wonderful night. And the recording will be posted tonight for everyone's coaches that were not able to make it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah.